prices have risen by a massive 10% over the last 12 months, making it the biggest jump in years. What do you feel when you walk past a house like this? Envy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Meaning more of us than ever are choosing to build rather than buy our ideal home. How hard can it be? Cut to a scene of the house falling <laughs> down. They're going to have to rip the guts out of this house. I'm actually <sighs> sweating. These builds can be the chance of a lifetime. The whole thing is being designed around your wheelie bin. <laughs> as crazy as it may sound, yes. <laughs> there are risks. Fingers crossed, the bank give us the money to finish the second floor. Why is the ridge not sitting on the oak beam? It's been cut wrong. But get it right. And the home of your dreams, that is a world away from the rundown house it once was, could be right on your doorstep. Oh, this is brilliant. That's what I always wanted, a family. And now you've got you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to happen. They're happy tears, aren't they? Because it's mm. so fabulous. Around 60% of second-time buyers don't have enough to move up the property ladder and it's even worse in desirable locations. This week I'm with two families who are refusing to be budged out and instead have decided to build. In Nebworth, Hertfordshire, Al and Suzanne are drowning in clutter in their tiny two-up, two-down. I've got boxes under beds, I've got boxes on top of cupboards. At each surface has got something on it. Irritating, doesn't describe it really. But their ambitious plans to build a huge two story extension are left hanging in the balance. The decision can go either way, so we want it obviously to go our way so we can build on that. But first, I'm off to Altrincham, one of the wealthiest towns in the northwest, home to Premier League footballers to writer Marnie and IT consultant Christian and their two children. We thought the street's beautiful and there are 1930s detached houses and it was near to the school that we wanted. Though they dream of a spacious 1930s gem, they ended up with a pokey 1950s wreck, which they bought for £400,000. Do you have to argue? No. All right, can we just have a bit of peace and quiet here? Mummy's trying to write. <sighs> kitchen. The kitchen's cramped. very long and narrow. Oh, the kitchen. Upstairs, it's very tight. Adam's in a tiny little box room, so he's got his bed and a wardrobe and about one foot of floor. But it hasn't been renovated for over 30 years, and it's tricky living with the no, current lack of space. The dilapidated decor is getting everyone down. When I wake up in the morning, I find plaster on my bed and I'm like, yak. Who, who has this finished sauna ceiling? Yes, it has. The house has been absolutely freezing. Every single window in the house, single glazed. We could see there's gaps where the wind comes blasting through. Delightful curtains. <laughs> Every time you pull them, they break, they fall off. I think it's fair to say right now, this is a long way from their dream house. We could see its potential, couldn't we? we? And yeah. we got that tingle of our spines. The idea is to not only make this place bigger, but put some 1930s Art Deco style character into it, because that's, that's our thing. Altrincham is a market town 30 minutes from Manchester. With its smart shops, community spirit and several schools rated outstanding by Ofsted, it's not surprising this is an expensive place to buy. So this is an area that you particularly want to stay in, is yep. it? Absolutely. It's, it's just that it's our dream come true to move to an area like this. Despite their name, the riches can't afford the premiership prices. But if they could, they'd move to a property like this one, which, although not 1930s, has the space and elegance they long for. 
And what do you feel when you walk past a house like this? Envy. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about this that you particularly like? Um, so, yeah, the kitchen diner thing is a really big deal. Wow. We've got a big open kitchen that we can sit in and eat as a family. There's fireplaces in every room, quite a nice grand entrance, and the stained glass. OK, so you have all that stained glass. Absolutely. Mm. So to come buy a house like this, you'd need about £800,000, and your house is worth £400,000. Yeah. So you'd have to find another £400,000. So do no you have 400000 So how much have you got? I've got 100000 So the plan is to try and create something as lovely as this yeah. with 100000 yeah. instead yeah. of... 400,000 you'd need to buy it. Yes. Exactly. Marley and Christian's dream house is £800,000, which is double the value of their current property, leaving them short by 400,000. But they have a fraction of that. Marley and Christian's bland 1950s box couldn't look more different to the spacious, characterful property they long for. It's clearly built later, this house than all the other houses in the street. So this isn't probably 1950s, and the other houses were built more in the 1930s. But because it's a corner plot, there's a lot more options. There's potential to extend the side and the back and reconfigure this uninspiring property time. The current layout has two average-sized double bedrooms and a box room upstairs. On the ground floor, there are all the rooms you'd expect, with a dining room, lounge, and so how is this kitchen not working for you at the moment? How is it working at all? It's dirty, it's old, it's cramped, it's not stylish, it's not a pleasure to cook in. Mm. This kitchen's incredibly dark. It is, it's miserable. And you're spending a lot of time at home, which you are. Yeah, all day. And presumably your work is helped if, if it's a positive environment. I really can't stand living in this dirt and guff any longer. Marnie may be a writer, but she's not exaggerating the health hazards of this house. But you find it affects your health, does it? Do oh, you? yeah, well, I've gone deaf. Um, I've got such severe allergic rhinitis to the dust mite poo that um, my uh, eustachian tubes that connect your nose to your ears and make your eardrums work have collapsed. So I've had to have grommets put in. I had to have an operation just over a month ago. Do you think you rushed into this, perhaps, a little? I'm not sure. In terms of the area, it's a fantastic area. It's yeah. really convenient, so we're really happy with where it is. It's yeah. just the house itself is a bit of a nightmare. It's a 1950s ugly sister on a street full of beautiful 1930s houses. So, for us, it is a case of uh, just doing what we can with a, making a silk purse out of house here. To create the silk purse, Marnie and Christian have big plans for their house. They want to build a wraparound extension. The ground floor will have a new open plan kitchen diner, a sitting room with bay window to match the 1930s properties on the street, and a new study for Marnie. Upstairs, the master bedroom will have an ensuite, and they plan to do a loft conversion to create additional space for the kids. But the riches are relying on children's writer Marnie getting a book deal to fund the loft conversion and allow them to move into rental accommodation during the extensive building works. Well, I guess if the book deal comes off and it, and it works, then maybe you could move out, maybe you yes. yeah. will do the Absolutely, loft conversion, yeah. so everything's better. Yeah, any day now. I mean, I'm overdue hearing and um, I'm just on tenterhooks constantly and just feeling incredibly stressed. We're both incredibly mm. stressed, yeah. but that will just solve so many problems. So if you don't get the book deal... I'm stuffed. <laughs> there's a lot riding on that Everything phone call or is. email. Mine has got a pivotal moment in her career about to happen, which is going to massively affect this build for her and Christian, not only psychologically, but also financially. Well, the Richies wait for the all-important phone call from Marnie's agent. I'm off to the picturesque village of Nebworth in Hertfordshire, where Susanna Andrea bought this two up, two down semi nine years ago. Intentionally, I was bought as a single person's house. At that time, I probably was still in the, the zone of, I don't want children, I'm never going to have kids. 
But one husband and two children later... Life from being sort of just me in this lovely big space has sort of become me and three others in this not very big space at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite cramped. <laughs> Little space, the lounge has become a multifunctional room. You walk in and there's toys all over the place. You'd have to clear that up before you can do anything. It doubles and triples up as our office, our dining room. It's a playroom for the boys. So really, pretty much everything happens in this room. To add to the overcrowding, both electrician Av and accountant Suzanne run their businesses from home. Um, Av's paperwork tends to be filed on the dining table and on the floor and on the kitchen sideboard. <laughs> With my equipment here, you can't get the door open sometimes, especially when you're trying to get the pram well, out in the morning. Trying to get the pram, the pram stays in the back of my car. They're trying to get in and out if there's bags of tools in the way, then you can't. So while Av gets the lounge, Suzanne gets the garage. The back is my office, which is pretty chock-a-block full with a lot of abs work materials. So it's really not working very well as an office because you have to manoeuvre around everything to get what you want. Suzanne and Av can't afford to trade up to a bigger property in Nebworth, a pretty rural village that is only an hour's commute from central London. And it's famous for its stately home and rock festival. But if money was no object, they'd be living somewhere like this. Spacious four bedroom property with a big open plan living area. I love the fact that it's got so much space. From the moment you walk in, it's quite light and airy and sort of breezy and things, there's no clutter. It's great that the master bedroom's got an ensuite and they've got a lovely garden and I can imagine it's pretty nice on a hot sunny day. This house is worth about £480,000 and, and your house is worth about 250000 so you'd need another. £230,000 to come and buy it. How much do you have? £50,000 on a budget. OK, it's a long way short. At £480,000, this house is far beyond their budget. Their house is worth £250,000. £230,000 short of the dream. And they have just £50,000. Susanna and Ab's house is half the size of their dream home. This house is in a lovely elevated position, but what's really exciting about it is this area to the side. It's just untapped potential. The home is currently made up of two bedrooms upstairs with a tiny bathroom. And downstairs are a small kitchen and the lounge, which is used for work, rest and play. Pretty much everything that goes on in this house happens in this room. So it's a truly multifunctional yes. space, but perhaps maybe a bit too multifunctional that you're <laughs> yeah, liking. Upstairs, the lack of space is no laughing matter. Do you find you're drowning in stuff and clutter everywhere? We've got boxes under beds, we've got boxes on top of cupboards. Each surface has got something on it. Irritating. Doesn't describe it, really. <laughs> this house is getting on top of Av and Suzanne, quite literally. They desperately need more space. They plan to knock down the garage in the garden and extend to the side and back of the house to create a big open plan kitchen diner, utility room and office for Suzanne and Av. Upstairs, they're building an additional bedroom for the boys and putting an en suite into the master bedroom at the front of the house. I'm a little bit worried about these plans. The house is full to the rafters and the garage is about to be demolished but they haven't got plans for any extra storage space. So you've got a, a storage crisis around the corner. I, I think you do need to really focus anywhere that you can possibly fit storage, because you'd be surprised how many areas you wouldn't consider to be good for storage, but you can squeeze storage in. And look at the house at the moment, it's only going to get worse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Av and Suzanne are certainly busting at the seams and they're going to have a storage crisis in a half if they don't solve a lot of the problems with the house. I'm with two families in pricey areas who can't afford the big dream home. So instead, they've taken on ambitious builds with not quite such glamorous budgets. In Networth, work has started on Andrea's £50,000 build. To transform a singleton's house into a family home big enough for two boys and two 
community businesses. Very excited um, just to have everything underway. But not long into the build, work comes to an abrupt halt. So the building inspector is coming out today and your building engineer is coming out today just to have a look at this footing. The builders have discovered the foundations of the boundary wall may not be adequate to build the extension on. So they're not quite sure what to do. So they built, they've called the building inspectors to come around today um, just to have a look if they can build off of that foundation. If not, then um, they'll have to excavate the whole lot. So they're talking another five foot of wall. If the building inspector decides they need to replace the foundations, it could cost thousands of pounds and delay the build by several days. The decision can go either way. So we'd want it obviously to go our way so we can build on that. In Altringham, Marnie and Christian dreamt of a 1930s period home. But had to settle for a 1950s wreck. It's the first week of their three-month build, which will cost them £100,000. Hey, what did I just tell you about leave the ball? Well, don't get the stick. No, don't get the stick. Come away, come away. The family are desperate to move out during the build, but are relying on extra funds from a book deal, which will also pay for the loft conversion. I was expecting to have some news by now. I know, but they said that, you know, that was two weeks ago and we still heard nothing. It's... The news isn't what the family had hoped for. When we've looked at our budget and decided what we can do while the building work's going on, looks like we're going to have to stay here and there's going to be a whole load of building work and dust and dirt and sharp tools lying around. It's going to be tough with the kids. Now, oh, now we're going to get out the door. Come on, out! I don't know! Worth, the building inspector has delivered his verdict. Good news, the structural engineer has been round and he suggested that we can build on the, the existing footing and the small brick wall. But there's more problems. But he threw another sort of small spanner in the works. Our next door neighbours who had built a, a, an extension and they told us that they're pretty deep. It just means obviously we have to submit another application to Thames Water for a build over agreement to move the drains. This means a further two week wait. Luckily, there's one job the builders can get on with. Can you see the garage? Look, they're going to knock that down today. When we come back later, it's going to be gone. We can get a trampoline. Wing, wing, wing. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're losing the garage, obviously we're losing the storage as well. Suze will be okay because obviously she'll gain study in the in the new house. Potentially there is a problem for the for my stuff. So it looks like I might have to find someone else's garage to rent. <laughs> in Altrincham, Marnie, who has had no choice but to stay put during the dusty build is finding her allergies unbearable. It's emotionally very hard on me particularly because I'm here in this house all day long and working. So I've got that backlog of despair, really. <laughs> Marnie's not alone, with 12 million Brits suffering from house-related allergies. Luckily, there are several oh, gadgets on the market yeah. to help. Uh -oh. To show you. First, I want to find out just how bad the dust problem is. Now, this is a scanner which sees how many particles are in a cubic foot yeah. of the air. Right. So there's 100,000 particles of dust in each cubic foot that in this room. That is just the grimmest thing I've ever heard. I'm not surprised you've got allergies. Purifiers are one of the most popular gadgets to remove pollution from the atmosphere. This is used in hospitals and in environments where there's a lot of particles in the air that need to be withdrawn. 
For a building site, there is a heavy duty filter which takes out the really thick yeah. brick dust in the air. If you put it in the bedroom at night, yeah. you'll find that as you sleep, your immune system recovers. Would that be not... great? With the drainage application approved, work is finally underway on the Andreas two story extension. But the storage issue is yet to be addressed. So all of this is going up, and yeah. and your big old storage garage has gone. Gone, yeah. It has gone, yeah. Which gone. which is good because it was a bit of an eyesore. Presumably, it means you don't have anywhere to put anything now. Well, we've used we've... next door neighbour's garage to just transfer everything over. Okay. Um, so we'll moving put... the problem on. Yes, <laughs> in the short term. <laughs> okay, the short but term. but the long term, you're going to have a problem. So I guess you want to make as much storage as possible in the house. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There are some cunning storage solutions that might work for Av's tools and the kids' toys in their living room. So this is what I wanted to show you. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Now, what this is, is a modular flat pack system, which you can also get fitted. Right. But it means that the space under the stairs can be fully used. And of course, before, your tools were lying around everywhere. Now we've popped them in here for you. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that they were gone, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so would this work better, do you think, for you? Yeah, that was, that was actually... That's really, really good. Really I neat really idea. Like These days, you can get storage to fit every nook and cranny in your home. But while it's one thing to hide clutter, there's no need to hide storage. Make a feature of dead space, such as around a doorway, staircase or around a chimney breast. If you lack space, get dual-purpose furniture, kids' beds with built-in wardrobe or headboard with secret cupboards. And make clever use of the leftover area under the stairs. If you'd like to find out more about extending your home, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. currently plan to keep their master bedroom at the front of the house and the boys' bedrooms at the back. But I think I might have a better idea. So this is a layout of how your landing is going to be okay. upstairs. Right. What you've got here is the, the stairs come up uh -huh. here. So I'm walking up the stairs. And then this C shape is the landing. At the moment you've got uh, your bedroom, the master bedroom at the front here, uh -huh. and then you've got two bedrooms at the back. So yeah. one has a doorway there and one has a doorway there. If you flip your master bedroom mm -hmm. and your the two boys' rooms around, which then means you'd come up here and then you'd have a door into the master bedroom there. And this section here is totally dead space. You'd need it with the other layout because you'd need a doorway into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. But with this layout, you don't need this space, so all of this could be then used for storage. So you'd have a really big cupboard floor to ceiling here. It's a huge amount of storage that you would be gaining simply yeah. by flipping the bedroom yeah. the other way. Yeah. OK. Now, that's something we hadn't considered. I'm already started thinking what we can put in here. <laughs> <laughs> flipping the master bedroom will create extra storage, which this couple desperately need for their busy working and family lifestyle. It's given us some ideas to think about and consider and the best use and the best layout of the first floor. Still undecided. I'm with two families in expensive areas who simply can't afford the big dream house they've built to move into. In Altrincham, Marnie and Christian are six weeks into their three-month build, transforming their dilapidated 1950s wreck. And the brickwork for the extension is going up. It's a real relief to see um, that the transformation is beginning now. And it's not just the house that has undergone a transformation. I feel like I'm wheeling a Zimmer frame. Thankfully, with the house's cleaner air, Marnie is breathing easier. After ages of feeling terrible, it all feels quite good now. In Nebworth, 
Suzanne and Av are three months into transforming a singleton's house into a clutter-free family home, big enough for two boys and two businesses. Yeah, looking at the space is actually quite, well, it makes you realise how big it is. Av's been thinking about putting the master bedroom and en suite at the back of the house to maximise storage. He's decided not to do this, and it seems somewhat surprisingly that rubbish is his motivation. The whole thing is being designed around your wheelie bin. <laughs> as crazy as it may sound, yes. Sarah suggested to um, move the bedroom to the back of the house, the master bedroom, and obviously the ensuite. But Av is worried that to do this would mean running the soil pipe down the side of the house, reducing the width of the access from the back garden, meaning the wheelie bins can't get through. Well, these are the offending bins. As you can see, they're lovely colours. I just don't want these wheelie bins at the front of the house. It's just, they, I think they're an eyesore. Do you know what I do? I plant a bush and put the wheelie bins behind the bush at the front and then have a really nice master bedroom, bathroom suite, make the most of all the landing space and not have a really weird layout just for your wheelie bin. I think we've gone beyond that point there, though. The only option is to rename the house Wheelie Bin Manor. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy as it sounds, Av is actually designing the whole of the inside layout around his wheelie bins, which seem to have a much higher status than I think that they really warrant. I do agree that they don't look great, but there's another solution. How difficult really is it to take a wheelie bin out and round to the front of the house? Not that hard. In Altrincham, the dated decor is being stripped out of the richest house. So I'm taking these Art Deco fans to a reclamation yard on the hunt for some classic 1930s pieces. 2.7 million new houses were built in the UK during the 1930s. Most of their exteriors were mock Tudor, and many had interiors in the Art Deco style at the time. Some of the most beautiful examples of Art Deco features you can find Stained glass windows, rectangular fireplaces with metal or tile surrounds, chrome light fittings, and geometric patterns on clothing and cornices. The riches are looking to finish their house with typical 1930s doors and stained glass windows. One of the most important things if you're trying to buy doors is to come armed with your measurements because they're all yeah. slightly different sizes, as you can see. Yeah. And whilst you can trim them a bit, you yeah. can't trim them substantially. So you need time, a tape measure, and some measurements. Transforming a bland 50s house into an elegant 30s home is all in the detail. Actually, it's the smaller items that can make such a difference. So here, and the handles, these aren't, aren't original, but they're a very good reproduction. Oh, they're beautiful. It? Lovely, yeah. These are very elegant, and they've got that beautiful 1930s fan motif that I'm so keen on. So. I think people massively underestimate how important the little details are with an overall look. But don't necessarily just look at houses. You can look mm. at boutique hotels, bars, mm. but also ocean liners, oh, ships. Wow. They often use that style in their interiors. So. And it's done on a grand scale as well, so you've got that drama. Yeah, so an excuse to go on a cruise, eh? <laughs> Definitely. Sounds like a plan. And I think for us, it's having something beautiful in the home. Yeah. It's like a piece of art. To me, this is an ideal way of putting something beautiful and stylish into your house and, and still obscuring the view out. Why not have it looking gorgeous? Yeah, so exactly. make a feature out of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, lovely. In Nebworth, Hertfordshire, Av and Suzanne are just weeks away from completing their £50,000 build. And with the kitchen and bathroom going in, it's time for electrician Av to do his bit. Great builders, great chippy, plumber, it works really, we've got a good team, good team. And of course, at the helm, my good self. <laughs> it's been five months since the Andreas began their ambitious project, transforming a Singleton's house into a spacious family home, with room for both their businesses. They tore down the garage to make way for the extension needed help with a looming storage crisis. That's really, really good. 
then out of the blue, I've made a surprising decision. The whole thing is being designed around your wheelie bin. As crazy as it may sound, yes. So have they ended up with the house of their dreams. Av and Suzanne had endless issues with this project, but I'm dying to see how it all turned out. Before, the house was a tiny two-up, two-down, which Suzanne bought as a single woman. But now it's doubled in size and transformed into a spacious family home. It's hard to believe that that was once a tiny two-up, two-down. There's still a little way to go on the outside, but so much has been done on the inside, I can't wait to see it. Previously, the kitchen was a cramped, dark room, just used for cooking. Now they've created an airy, open-plan kitchen diner, which is the heart of the family home. It's a big space now. You had one room you did everything in, uh -huh. didn't you, before? And what's it like now, having all of this space? Having this space has just made family life that much more easy. Before, we were constantly having to set things up, like the dinner table had to be put out, the chairs had to be put out. And here, obviously, there's a space for everything. Everything's kind of got its unique area and we don't have to clear it all up before we can get on with the next job in hand. Does it feel now like a family home? I think looking around now, I can't believe it's the same house anymore. And the change that we've made to it now is just... It's like a different house altogether. Where once the living room was a dumping ground for all the family clutter... ..they've now created clever storage spaces. Upstairs, there was a small single bedroom for the two boys, a bathroom and a cramped master bedroom. But now the boys have a bedroom each and the stylish master bedroom has a smart new entry suite. It's a lovely room, this, isn't it? With an ensuite, which I know you're really keen to have. But at one point, you were thinking about swapping the bedrooms around, so you had the master bedroom and bathroom at the back of the house and then the kids' rooms at the front, but you decided to not go with that. That didn't quite work out because we wanted the um, saw pop to be inside the house as opposed to outside. So that it didn't take up the room for Wheelie Bin Manor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where once Suzanne was struggling to run her business from the garage, the couple now have a smart, functional office. This is absolutely yeah. great. I've got to say, I think this is a really good space. There's something fantastic about taking a relatively small space and embracing the fact it's small and thinking, yeah, let's use some colour. It, it's nice that we've kind of created a room that isn't just your book standard office, white walls, plain furniture. Do you work more efficiently now? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> because they couldn't afford their dream home, Av and Suzanne took the bold step and transformed this cramped property into a beautiful home. And so, so now it's all finished. Was it, was it worth it? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's made a massive difference to the house. Massive di difference to, to our, our lives, lives yeah. yeah. Is it now your dream house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you started the project, the house is worth about 250000 mm -hmm. and you hoped that you would be able to do the build for 50000 didn't you? Yeah. How much did you end up spending? Well, we spent, in total, about eighty two. Oh, yeah, about 82000 Suzanne wanted to buy their dream home, it would cost them £480,000, nearly twice the value of their property. So instead they stayed where they were and designed their own new home for £82,000, creating their dream home for £148,000 less than the cost of buying it. OK, so now I think it would be 
pretty realistic to assume that the house would be worth about 370,000. So that means you've you've made 38,000 pounds of equity in your home. Oh, that's okay, fantastic. That's great. And if you had to sum up in one word how this house makes you feel. It's just it's a happy family home. Yeah. So would you go back and do the whole thing again now? I'm not sure I'd do it all again. <laughs> not what's it enough for? Yeah. <laughs> So one happy family and one project wrapped up. But in Altrincham, after living through the bill for almost three months, Marnie has reached the end of her tether. It's got to the point where I'm having a sense of humour failure. In Altrincham, the Richards family are two and a half months into their build, and the extension for the new kitchen diner is up. This is very, very beautiful. It's a shame it's going to be covered up by a fridge. The Richards family have had to live on site during their extensive build. I've got the kids hanging around because it's summer holidays and there's nowhere for us to go. And Marnie has had enough. It's got to the point where I'm having a sense of humour failure. Living through home builds can be incredibly stressful and it's important not to lose sight of your end goal. The riches were determined to put some 1930s Art Deco design into their house. But why just take inspiration from a magazine or shop? It's not the first place you'd think of going, but the Queen Victoria Ocean Liner does Art Deco on a grand scale. Well, that chandelier's absolutely amazing. Beautiful, isn't it? It's light fitting really well. Yeah. There's nice deco lights as well, aren't they? Yeah. They've got these tub chairs. Art Deco lover Marnie is in 1930s heaven. I love the colours in this, actually. There's some nice finishes here. The tiles are lovely as well. Oh, look, stained glass. Oh, it's loads of it up there. Yeah. It's a bit like the roof of an orangery or something, but... Oh, it's gorgeous. We need to build a room especially to fit this chandelier in. And look at this. It's all shiny and dust-free. I absolutely can't wait until our house is all done and dusted and then we won't have grot. It'll be as bright and airy and clean as this. It's been a fantastic opportunity because when you go around your stores and you're looking at things in isolation in a, in a shop, you don't really get that context of how it's going to look in a bigger room. So coming here and seeing everything put together has given us some fantastic ideas. Yeah, it's got the perfect balance of glamour and Art Deco style fixtures and fittings, but with a modern, usable feel to it. Yeah, it's great. It's been a great day. Yes. Really good. Three months ago, the Rich's family had a house where nothing was right. There's gaps where the wind comes blasting through. They could only dream of owning a house like their footballer neighbours. What do you feel when you walk past a house like this? Envy. <laughs> <laughs> so they took on an almighty challenge. In a bid for their dream 1930s inspired home, they survived living through an extensive build. Hey, what did I just tell you? With worsening health. Got that backlog of despair, really. But now the dream of a spacious home with 30s inspired design is almost a reality. Now that's really starting to take shape. You can really see how this house is very soon going to completely blend in with the other 1930s houses around. The outside might not quite be finished, but inside, well, that's another story. Before, this neglected house was dark, dirty and dated. But now the riches have brought the property into the 21st century. It has clean lines, it's flooded with light, and touches of the 30s are everywhere. 
Goodness me, what a transformation. Yeah, it's fabulous. That really is. It's such a wonderful space now. We can entertain, we can obviously do fantastic cooking. It really surpasses my expectations and my expectations were high. Yeah. Did, is this sort of house you imagined you'd live in? Well, we hoped we would yeah. one day. But, yeah. I, I think we, ca we came and we saw the house and it, it was a diamond in the roof and we could see its potential. But it's not until the space is actually built and filled with beautiful things that you think, this is wow, wow, you are. This, this is a bling kitchen, so ace. Previously, the house was so old and dirty, it plagued Marnie's health. But now the updated property is dust-free and air. There was always a thin, thin film of dust covering everything, really, and, and now, of course, it's as beautifully clean as the uh, cruise liner that we went to see. So ship-shape. Ship-shape in <laughs> Bristol fashion. Yeah, great. So you've got the dream house, but uh, without having to pay for it. Yeah, there's no way we could have bought this off the peg. But it also wouldn't have been exactly to our taste, either. It's nice to put your little stamp of individuality on it. It's contemporary, the house, but yeah. you have got the reminder of the 1930s style, which you wanted so much yeah. everywhere, in the furniture yeah. and in the colours and yep. in the pictures. Art Deco is a very elegant period, but of course we're living, um, you know, in this century, so it has to function well, it has to be stylish and clean lines. Yeah, so we have chandeliers that, um, in the hallway and on the landing upstairs that also continue that theme and have again some art deco we've got some fantastic art deco molding ceiling roses and mm. stuff mm. the old bedroom was a health nightmare for marnie but now it's bright and immaculate <sighs> God, this is quite a difference mm -hmm. well there's loads of space and it does all the things we need it to do you know this there's fitted wardrobes, we've got an ensuite, and it feels light and bright and spacious and stylish, which is all the things I wanted. And, and you've got the stained glass windows, which are, of course, very 1930s. Yeah. yeah, they do look like pieces of art. And you had no original doors in the house, did you? No, no. no. They're all um, 80s, MDF. They just didn't suit the house no, at all. No, I knew that I wanted that one over three panel 30s look. And it's a little bit tricky using reclaimed doors because the architraves have to be built almost to fit the door. It's been such a long process that, yeah, um, to fall down at, at the final hurdle and not think about the interior would, would have been a travesty. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed that aspect of it and you've yeah, I... left me to it. <laughs> you carried the heavy things. I've agreed with you every step of yes. the way. <laughs> and, and do you like the end result? I think it's fantastic. I think Marnie's got a great eye for these little finishes, the little touches that just make the rooms complete, so absolutely. So... Well done, husband, thank you. This project was about more than just making space. It was to create a home inspired by the elegance of time gone by. When all the final bits and pieces are done on the outside, yeah. it's going to be pretty magnificent, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Is this now your dream house? Yes. Yeah, it, it's surpassed my expectations, definitely. Mm. It's as good as it gets, I think. Now, I know you're not planning on moving immediately, but the money on this does matter to you, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not irrelevant. Oh, no, absolutely no. not. And the house when you started was worth... 400,000. Yeah, that's pounds. what we bought it for. You were going to spend 100,000. How much did you end up spending? Yeah, so we ended up spending 120,000. Yeah. The 100,000 was before we'd had any quotes. So it was a guesstimate. It was an educated guess. Yeah. Marnie and Christian's dream house was worth 800,000 pounds. Double what their own property was worth. But they've created their perfect home for 120,000 saving them £280,000. Well, the good news is that I think now it would be really realistic you would get probably about £625,000. So really? You, right. Fantastic. So you good. should make a yeah. good £105,000 profit should you want to sell. That's wow. good. That's good to know. Does that make that it... sweetens the experience. <laughs> it's been a tough process, but like with childbirth, the thing that comes at the end of it is well worthwhile. So the riches can now start living a 1930s-inspired, healthier life with a far healthier financial outlook.
It's proof that if you can't afford the dream with a load of imagination, you can create it. Would you do it again? Yeah. <laughs> In a heartbeat. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. It's a slightly addictive process because when it's all finished, you see it coming together, it's just so immensely satisfying. And then the end product, right now, you just think, I did all that. So yeah, I'd do it again. But I'm happy to stay here for a while and enjoy what we've done here as well. The Riches family home was in desperate need of new life. And now with its vibrant transformation, it's going to be a happy home for them to enjoy. If you'd like to find out more about extending your home, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash bb.